So I wanted to share with you a really powerful tool that I've used for most of my uh, professional career. It's not something that I created. It actually was created by the uh, 34th president of the United States, Dwight Eisenhower. And he actually developed this matrix when he served as a general during World War II. And what he developed in a matrix was really a decision-making process on completing tasks and what needed to be done. And so I'm going to just share with you this matrix today and how it's helped me um, not only as a teacher, but an instructional coach, uh, administrator, and in the work I do today. So across the top, just like in a regular matrix, you're going to see um, the top two boxes are labeled. One is labeled urgent. One is labeled not urgent. And then along the sides, you'll see a box labeled not important and a box that's labeled important. And so how the matrix works is you, just like any other matrix, you bring these two words together and it gives you a specific task or a way to look at those specific skills or tasks that need to be finished. So for example, if something comes across your desk and it's important and it's urgent, this matrix would identify that task as something you need to do right now. And so when I was a building principal, um, one of the pieces that I would typically do is if a parent left me a voicemail and I came back into my office after being in classroom, um, I would identify that call as important and as urgent. It's something I want to do right away. I want to get it taken care of. I want to resolve that for the parent. I don't want them sitting at home stewing and being frustrated and losing patience. And so for me, parent voicemails were often important and urgent. Um, there's also things that come across our desk as, as educators that's important, but maybe not necessarily urgent. And so those are things that we specifically want to plan in our day. And so I always look maybe five, seven days down the road. Um, what do I want to complete and how do I want to make sure that I get it done, but it doesn't need to be done today. And so I see several of those things as I work with partners now that it's important, um, but I may not have a meeting until next Tuesday. And so it's not something that I need to do right away, but I want to put it on my calendar and schedule it to make sure that it does get done. And so I want to plan for that. And so that's why it's important as educators, we are really being visionary in our plans and really being strategic in how we operate and utilize our calendar. So if it's an important task and it's not urgent, we want to plan for that. The next category is not important, but it's urgent. And there are things that are going to maybe come across our desk or we're asked to do, and it's really urgent that it gets done, but it's not necessarily important to the functions that I need to do in the role that I'm in. And so this is an opportunity where we can delegate that to someone who is more appropriately aligned in completing that task and get it done in a timely fashion. So that's really where delegation comes in. We don't want to just delegate something to somebody because we don't like it. We want to delegate it because it's not necessarily important to the job functions that I need to do um, or I need to accomplish in order to move the vision forward of my organization. This is where we want to make sure we surround ourselves with really great people who know their tasks and their skills and know what their vision is so that we can delegate those tasks that are urgent and get done. And then the final one, as you can expect, it's not important and it's not urgent. So what do we do in those situations? We need to eliminate those tasks altogether. Now, that can certainly have its own set of challenges. And so if it's something that needs to be eliminated, but you need to talk with maybe a supervisor, um, you need to decide, is that conversation urgent and important? Or is that a conversation that's important, but not urgent? And so I may plan to have that conversation with my supervisor three, four days down the road, while I put that other not important, not urgent task, maybe in a holding pattern before I officially eliminate it. If you have the ability and the power and the control to eliminate it, then by all means do so. We want to make sure that we're using a decision making model for what we need to get accomplished um, that's logical, sequ sequential, makes sense for us. And so for me, that's the Eisenhower matrix. I actually have it. Um, laminated and put out um, right here on my desk. And I leave it here every day to help me kind of think through things as I'm having calls, Zoom meetings, WebExes, reading email, and really thinking about my day and what I need to get accomplished. So I hope this Eisenhower matrix is a useful tool to you. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So please comment below on how the Eisenhower matrix is helpful for you, questions that you have um, and comments. I'd love to engage with you and continue the conversation around how do we become efficient in the work that we do each and every day?